Hello everyone, my name is Michael Lamott. I am the founder of ChartYourTrade.com. Our goal is to inspire millions of hardworking people just like you to take advantage of the stock market. And the way that we're going to do that is by sharing a lot of the experiences that I've had that have worked for me, that have helped me navigate the market with a full-time job, with a family, and be able to be successful. So today, we have a question that came in from Mikhail. If you enter the order on the broker platform, is there a big risk of it being triggered by market makers, flash crashes, etc.? So for example, if, if you have a million dollars to invest and you have 10 positions and a 10% stop loss, you would end up being stopped out for $10,000 just for an order that's sitting at the market that could easily be triggered. I have a few different thoughts on stop losses that I'd like to share with you. First off, there's going to be pluses and minuses to any action that we take or, or actions that we don't take in the market. So let's run through some of the pluses and minuses for setting stop losses and just having them sit there. The first and most obvious benefit of setting stop losses is that you know specifically where you're going to get out if price reaches a certain level and it makes managing your risk a lot easier so uh, whether you're going to manage for a stop loss or your initial stop loss or if you're going to manage your your position and raise your stops pro progressively as your stock continues to move higher you're going to be able to manage your position much easier that way. The, uh, the other benefit, and, and this is really the other key to why I love to use resting stop losses, is because it unties me from the computer. I don't have to sit in front of the computer all day and manage, actively manage the position. The, the order is just there. And also, for people that are, are busy throughout the day, if you are somebody that has uh, a full-time job or you're somebody that can't sit in front of the computer all day, or if you're somebody that, if, if you get an alert and you can't go to your phone and immediately place an order or, or check the market to see if, if you need to exit, then it, all those worries are put aside and you just, it, it, there's nothing for you to do you have the stop loss in there and it's going to just be triggered once price crosses below x and and that's it there's nothing else for you to do so so that that's the big benefit of having the stop loss it, it really unties you from having to be involved in the market intraday at all it allows you to be able to plan and come up well with ideas at nights on the weekends and then implement them while the market's sleeping and then just when the market is is open the plan is taking care of itself you don't have to actively be there doing anything so those are the pluses the minuses is, is that yeah you might be shaken out of the stock prematurely um and that that's the real that's the real concern right that you're going to be shaken out of a position prematurely meaning that the the market maker or really the market itself is going to run down to your wherever you set your stop and then reverse off of it that, that's the fear so now there's a couple of ways to deal with this so number one it could be where we placed our stop that could be the problem if we made our stop too tight then we do run the chance of it being triggered and price immediately reversing off of it that's why support is more of a zone versus an exact level if i put my stop right on the 50-day moving average and i don't bother to look to the left of the chart and see that uh several weeks ago or a month ago or more that there's a <clears throat> a support level or a prior resistance level that may have turned into support that's just below the 50-day, then then that's on me. 
Uh, we need to take into account all different kinds of potential support. And that's why I like to work with multiple levels of support that are on the chart, on daily charts, on weeklies, monthlies, etc., different trend lines. And when there's multiple types of support converging at one area, then that's going to make that area a lot more reliable than just looking at a round number or or just one moving average it's better to have multiple things working in your favor so that way if it does get triggered then there's less of those question marks around oh is the stock being manipulated and am i just being sh shaken out prematurely then it it also could just be the luck of the draw as well it, it is, it, these things happen in the market. That's the risk that we take when we, uh, when we buy, when we sell. They, yeah, well, we're never going to catch the exact top or the exact bottom. What we're looking to do is capture the bulk of the move. And yes, it is possible that a stock could come in, trigger our stops, and then immediately rally. So what do I do when that happens? Uh, one of the things that I do when that happens is that if a stock falls to my stop loss and I get stopped out and then it rallies, if that move ends up being uh, some some sort of a buy signal for me where if it's rallying, closing at the top of the day and it's doing that on heavy bottom volume and now establishing a new floor, that kind of a reversal could be an entry point. And so we could get right back into the position if if it does that. Yeah, well, we're losing out on a couple of points here or there, but we are able to get back in and then enjoy the rest of the move. The downside of not having the stop loss and doing stop losses manually is that if the stock falls below that stop loss, then it, it could keep going, and there's no telling how far uh, a stock could fall uh, well, without our stops. And then if we're not able to go and immediately sell, or if emotions come into play and uh, we start hoping that the stock will, will go up, then uh, we could end up with, with a much larger loss than we would have had otherwise. So, so that that's why I really like to have the stop loss in place with my broker. And if it gets triggered, the, then it gets triggered. And it, it's always up to me to say, okay, then I can buy the stock uh, again, either at the end of the day or wait until some other setup happens and, and buy it then. Uh, we're free to do really well, whatever we want to do in the market. And so therefore, I think that the stop loss is a very useful tool to help us, especially for those of us that are trading part time, not to have to worry about the, our stocks falling below a certain level and taking massive losses, because that's what the stop loss is there for. If it falls below X, we're going to be out and that's it. So... So I hope that that was helpful for you. Let me know what your thoughts are on stop losses. I'd love to hear them. Let me know if this was helpful for you. If you like the video, please take a moment, like the, the video. Also subscribe to our channel so that way you get all of our updates. And that's it for today. Thank you so much for watching. Truly appreciate your time and your attention. And I will see you again in the next video. Take care.